Welcome to this new series of videos on recommender systems. And, you know, as usual, when I make videos, we will try to uh, be applied in how we learn things. I think the best way to learn is to, to build and to really do things from scratch and to understand them. So we will try to use that um, perspective of learning throughout the series of videos uh, and you know, try to build a really solid understanding of first, you know, the intuitions of recommender systems and the methods and, and so on. And then uh, also, you know, uh, the implementation part. So uh, for those of you who are not that familiar with recommender systems, this video is going to be an introduction and we're going to try to get sort of a, uh, an overview and some vocabulary, some definitions maybe, um, yeah, basically some intuition on what this field is about. And then also try to motivate uh, why recommender systems. So I think this is also a huge part because, you know, you want to spend your time wisely on what you learn. So I'm going to try to motivate why recommender systems might be um, something interesting to, to learn about. So first of all, you know, if we look, if we uh, take a sort of overview perspective of all the big companies, then we will see that what's driving uh, pretty much all of them are recommender systems. So Rexis recommender systems are powerful and you know, sort of the backbone. Uh, if we look at, you know, YouTube, for example, it's pretty actually amazing how pretty much the entire platform is recommender systems. Uh, and, um, you know, even, you know, X uh, or Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Spotify, Amazon, Netflix, you know, uh, all of these are using. And, and also where I work at store number eight, where we're doing um, personalized uh, food and we're personalizing the food experience. It, uh, you know, it's prevalent pretty much at all the big companies. So one thing I want to try to emphasize here is that I sort of see Rexis as a silent giant uh, b behind the hood. Uh, if we look at on the left, there's a pie chart where this is from an analysis done in 2019, where at that point in time, uh, it's a little bit outdated, obviously. Uh, but at that point in time, when they did the analysis, computer vision was uh, the most dominant. And then they had some face ID, some translation, some... Uh, speech recognition stuff, and then 2% of the papers were in recommendations. Uh, so, you know, it's a little bit outdated in terms of now NLP, since I think 2018 was the year of NLP. Since then, you know, NLP has been exploding, especially this year. So a huge part of this pie has probably been eaten up by NLP. But Nonetheless, I think that the, the idea that recommendation systems are taking up a very small part of it is still true. Uh, but if we look at, you know, recommender system, it's something that we interact with daily. Uh, it forms a huge part of, you know, for example, you know, like my experience and people experience in general of technology, uh, you know, websites, apps, and it also drives huge profits. So. If you look, you know, there's a reason why all the big companies are building Rexes and why they're investing so much in Rexes engineers. And it's not because they want to be nice to these engineers. It's because they drive a lot of revenue. So, you know, if you look at ad prediction, that for, might not be the sexiest job. And, uh, you know, if you make a 0.1% improvement in the ad prediction at, at Facebook, Maybe it's not that sexy, but you'll be driving an insane amount of profit. Uh, also, if you look at the influence, I would say, you know, just look at YouTube and imagine the impact it has on your experience, depending on what videos you're recommended and watch. Uh, what if you go on to X or Twitter and you see, you know, your feed, what tweets are given to you? Or, you know, if you use Google News, what news are recommended to you? Uh, what movies you watch on Netflix, what products you buy on Amazon, perhaps also, you know, which parts of the world you travel to based on what's recommended to you. Uh, and just try to reflect, you know, how that influences your perception of the world. Uh, I would say, you know, here with great power comes great responsibility in Rexes. And we've seen the effects of, you know, these powerful algorithms 
Um, perhaps if you watch The Social Dilemma, you know, there are lots of things to reflect on here, but having the, the possibility of having influence and impact through recommender systems uh, is quite, uh, uh, you know, quite clear. So just to uh, sort of drill in this point of uh, Rectus being a silent giant, uh, this is from another paper around the same time, 2019-2020, which looked at uh, Facebook's uh, inference cycles on their AI cluster. And at that point in time, uh, and I don't believe that much has changed, over 70% of their compute on the cluster was driven by recommender systems. So this again really sort of showcases how underemphasized recommender systems are in the machine learning research community uh, compared to how they're used in production. So going into a little bit more of actual Rex's vocabulary, uh, you know, we're not going to try to really understand uh, in depth depth now. Uh, that's what we're going to do in the subsequent videos when we look at a specific concept, uh, try to understand the intuition, and then maybe implement something to, to, to learn it from scratch. But here I want to look at some fundamental concepts. So one of those that's really crucial is user feedback. Obviously, we try to tailor based on user feedback. And then there's uh, two types of, over, from an overview perspective, there's two types where we have explicit feedback, and this is direct feedback that we get. Uh, it's provided by the user. Uh, maybe they've given, you know, ratings, uh, likes, dislikes, um, perhaps even, you know, some type of surveys. And then we have implicit feedback, which is, uh, we try to look at the user's actions. Uh, what have they actually clicked? What have they actually watched? Uh, you know, browsing behavior and so on and uh, in recent years uh, uh, the big companies have moved away from explicit feedback and moved uh, more towards implicit they still have explicit and they still use it but it's not as common or it's not built up around the explicit ones as much and there are some reasons for that but i think the main one is that implicit is just much easier to gather and you have uh, an abundance of it compared to how many people actually click the like or dislike button. And then looking at uh, the types of different recommender systems, uh, at a very basic summary or overview level, you have non-personalized, uh, which is we look at statistics from a broad user base and then we recommend them popular content. So there's a a problem in recommender systems called the cold star problem. Uh, there's actually multiple types, but as a general sense, uh, we have, let's say, when a, when a new user onboards. We don't have any information about that user, so uh, we need to give general recommendations, but they're still sort of likely to be enjoyed by this user. And kind of by definition there, popular content is uh, a great start. It's a very strong baseline. And if you're, a, for example, a, a movie uh, lover, then perhaps you've uh, used uh, IMDb or something to look at the statistics uh, and what's popular. Then you also have personalized, uh, which is, you know, we actually try to analyze how has the user interacted with our system. And then from that, we can tailor the recommendations uh, and enhance the user experience. So diving into, you know, non-personalized Rexus a little bit more, we have uh, a different, some different types of, of, of ways of implementing it that are quite common. One is a popularity based. So we look at what are the popular uh, items or content, as we said, you know, IMDb top 250 for a movie lover. And then that's without considering user preferences. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's a very strong baseline because the, these are liked by the, the majority of people. And then we have demographics based. Uh, let's say, you know, we're building a, a news recommender system like Google News or something. We might uh, take into consideration what country they're, they're from and then give them more recommend sort of news that are specific to that country. You know, this might not be true or this might or might not be true to that specific individual but on a broader sense it'll uh, you know probably it will apply right and then we have 
uh, associative rules. So imagine we are building directs at Amazon and we are, you know, once you click on an item, you, you might get, you know, other people or users have also bought or customers have also bought or something like that. I don't know exactly how they phrase it, but then you'll have, you know, uh, for example, you might build, if people are looking at a specific item, let's say a TV, then we might know from, from statistics that users are likely to also want a, a speaker if they're looking at this TV. So, and this is without any personalization, this is just what we know is true in general. Uh, and then there's temporal based where, you know, maybe let's say we're recommending uh, meals, perhaps certain types of meals are more common during certain periods of the year. If we're in a specific holiday like Thanksgiving or like Christmas, then there might be specific uh, things we might recommend just during that part of the year. Uh, and if we look at, you know, the personalized recommender system, which is really why, where things come alive, right? Uh, then we have some different common ways of implementing this. And again, this is just a very, very broad uh, overview. We will dive deep, deeper into all of these, uh, you know, in the, in the series, but content based is uh, when we try to use the actual content information of uh, a user's profile and items, and then we try to, to match based on those. So this is in contrast to collaborative filtering where we actually rely on user interactions with, um, with the system. So, you know, we look at what have they clicked, what have they rated, and we don't rely on content about or information we have um, about the user or the items. And then, uh, you, you know, we have contextual rexes, which is we try to leverage situational context, you know, maybe time, location, device, um, and so on. Uh, so, I mean, let's say an example, uh, you, uh, we look at your location, we take a, into consideration uh, what is the weather in your location and what is the time. We might give you what are some, we might recommend you some fun things to do at that particular place. And so if we look at the weather is, uh, you know, it's hot outside and you're at close to a beach, we might recommend you to go to the beach. If it's very cold, we might say, hey, uh, there's a, this nice place that's inside, you know. Uh, that's based on context on of the, where the user is located. Uh, similarly, for building a restaurant recommender, perhaps it's quite important to know where are you located, and then we can give restaurants that are close by. And then there are hybrid recommender systems that try to integrate techniques from from different types. So you could have a content and collaborative based, for example. You could have combine the power of both of those, and then uh, try to uh, utilize both recommendations in some way or, or just be build a hybrid recommender system uh, that utilizes both information. So again, if we look at a, a sort of a broader overview again, what is the fundamental idea of recommender systems? Uh, first, the first question we really must try to answer is what is the objective we're trying to accomplish? What are we trying to improve? Uh, and so some examples here, you know, YouTube, Netflix, they try to uh, use implicit feedback, they try to, to try to say, well, if you spend time using our platform, then that is a, a great metric that what we're, what we're doing is useful and valuable to you. So if we try to optimize our system to make, to, for you to like watching the platform more in terms of watch time, then we're doing a good job. And then we have, uh, uh, you know, ad prediction, for example, it might instead look at click-through rate and conversions, uh, and other might look at, well, what ratings have you given it, uh, one to five? And then there are, you know, other types of impact measures in terms of, you know, business sense and, and so on. So, but this is really crucial to, to really, really dial in what is the objective we're trying to accomplish. And then after that, we try to look at, okay, what is the data that we have? Do we have user interactions? Uh, and even, you know, if we have it, for example, uh, how many users do we have? How many items do we have? How is the actual, how, how exactly does the data look like? like this impacts a lot on the, the, the next step, which is 
what learning paradigm do we want to use? Uh, if we do not have user interaction, then we might need to build a non-personalized approach, uh, at first at least. But then, you know, depending on the exact data we have, we might want to go into a content only based or a collaborative one if we have user interactions. Um, uh, and then, uh, you know, maybe a hybrid or a contextual one. And then also you're looking at other things as well. Do we want to use a more traditional, uh, simpler algorithm or are we trying to leverage deep learning uh, and then associated with that, you know, what are the latency requirements? Are we building an online Rexes or an offline one and so on? And then, you know, uh, we need to also to look at evaluation metrics, depending on what we choose as the objective for our, for what we're trying to build. Maybe if it's in terms of a business impact uh, sense, then uh, we need to try to, you know, once we get back user logs on how they've interacted, then how do we try to accomplish the objective and try to set up evaluation metrics that capture that impact measure? Uh, and then, you know, we might look at offline evaluation metrics. Just throwing some at you, uh, root mean squared error, mean average precision, uh, and then NDCG. Uh, and uh, also crucial here, you know, designing online experiments with A-B testing. Uh, Obviously, uh, here there's a lot of things to cover, right? And we're going to try to do that in this series, but this is just uh, to, to give you an overview. And then the last stage is I would say Rexis is very crucial to be alive. Uh, you need to have something that constantly improves. The user must feel that it, it, it takes how they've interacted with the system and engages with the system uh, into consideration and tries to improve their experience. Uh, and in many cases, you know, you need to set up automate, automated pipelines to fine tune the recommender system uh, every couple of hours or every couple of uh, every week or every month on a periodic basis. Uh, and, and, uh, and, you know, depends on the case as well, like how often do we need to give new recommendations for TikTok, for example, they're having a real time recommender system and, and we all know perhaps like how good it is. It's insanely good, highly addictive. Um, uh, and uh, so, but in other cases for YouTube, they might update every couple of hours or every day or so. So then it's uh, choose as a periodic based on the, on the actual application. All right, that is it for uh, this video where we try to get an, an introduction to recommender systems and try to introduce the concepts. Uh, in the upcoming video, we will try to look at the very basics of recommender system in terms of, you know, what is the uh, easiest recommender system we can build? We'll try to look at some examples and we'll try to dive into some code. Uh, and uh, yeah, this, this series as well, uh, is not, uh, I have sort of a, a structure that I want to generally follow, but, um, to be honest with you, there's things that I'm going to be diving deeper into myself, building this playlist and this series. And so if you have any recommendations to, to improve, let me know. And I'll try to take that into consideration. I think that's it. Um, follow me on, uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, I'll try to be active in the, in the comments on, on these videos as I upload them. So if you have any questions, let me know. And, uh, thank you for, uh, for watching this video.